The preparations are over. It's time to go racing at the 33rd Annual ARCA 200 at Daytona. We welcome you live to the World Center of Racing as ESPN begins its stock car race coverage for 1996. We've come full circle. Tuesday, the garage area was silent. There have been a lot of things happened in the Arca garage since then, but once again, it is silent. Here's Bill Weber. Well, Bob, for the last four days, this has been the home for the ARCA cars, crews, their sponsors, and, of course, their drivers. It has been a blur of activity. Teams trying to find that fragile balance between speed and setup and being ever so cautious of that razor-sharp line between success and failure. For those that have succeeded and found the formula, today they start near the front of the field. For those that have failed, well, they've headed home. They've loaded up. And today, they watch with us on ESPN. For those in between, now perhaps their biggest challenge. Can they match the muscle of those that outclass them in qualifying? And can they tackle this tough two and a half mile track for 200 miles here at Daytona? There are big names and no names in this field. Several questions that will be answered in the next 80 laps. And Bill, this is a Super Bowl indeed for ARCA drivers. 46 came to Daytona, 42 will start today. Their goal, 80 laps here on the high banks for $185,000. As you look back across the field, the cars being brought out from the garage area. They will come out one by one. They've been gridded back in the garage and brought to bear. Take a look at some of the drivers. Rows six to the front, each one Ford and one Chevrolet. Harris Devane here, car number 33, 1995, co-rookie of the year came within a hiccup of winning at Talladega, ran out of gas, just coming out of turn four. In front of him, the 1993 winner of this race, Jeff Purvis. Watch for him to be very, very strong. And across from Purvis, last year's pole sitter, Bob Shack, in a Ford Thunderbird, the same car, the same engine. Shack was quick in practice, stumbled a little bit in qualifying, had a motor problem, but he is back full bore and ready today. And we back up on the front row, the young man who was the hottest commodity at the end of 1995, Tim Steele, the 1993 series champion, won three in a row, Winchester, Salem, and the finale on ESPN at Atlanta. He will be strong and on the pole. He's a rookie driver in ARCA competition, but no name you're not going to forget for a long time. He's the touring series champion of the truck series, the super truck series for NASCAR, Mike Skinner. His first ARCA start at Daytona, yes, it is the car number three, and yes, it's on the pole, and once again, yes, it is owned by Richard Childress. So many ingredients, so many names up front, and so much competition about to come your way. Jerry is down there amongst 42 cars and drivers set to do battle for 80 laps here this afternoon. It's an experienced field, but yet there are nine drivers in the field that are 25 years of age or under. But there are also veterans set to do battle, and there is perhaps nobody that can tell you about how important this race is for careers than a guy who won here and, in fact, came up to Major League Stock Car Racing through the ARCA ranks, Benny Parsons. Well, thank you very much, Bob. In 1965, folks, I came here for the first time. Didn't have a clue what I was doing and finished third, actually. 1968, I crashed because I had no idea. In 1969, I won this race. It was a 300-mile race then. And in 1970, I probably learned the most valuable lesson I ever learned in stock car racing. The right front tire was going flat. I thought that the chassis was just off on the car. I kept driving it. I blew the right front tire, almost knocked the wall down. The <laughs> next time I had a right front tire go flat, I knew exactly what to do. That's going to pits and fix that problem. So you're not going to learn everything today. I think most of those young drivers today are just awed by being here. I mean, this is, after all, Daytona, the birthplace of speed. This is where you make your reputation. This is where you become a race car driver. They'll go back home. They'll think about it. They'll learn something that second and third time here. A few butterflies maybe down there? Oh, man, don't you know <laughs> they are? Because, again, folks, this is the place. I remember when I crashed in 1968. I came off the corner. I had a very fast race car, but I had some tire problems. I came off turn four, and the car turned sideways, and I turned it back to the right. And as it came back, I was going straight ahead. The thought flashed through my mind. 
golly, I hope the cameras are rolling because I'm a star. Did you say, I said, save this car. <laughs> it never stopped going right in the wall head on. And you didn't knock it down, did you? Well, I didn't knock the wall down that time. <laughs> I waited until 1970 to do that. So, again, yeah, this, this place is something else. It's fast, and there's so much to learn at this racetrack. They're not going to learn it all today. Yep. It's going to be a, just a start. We've been following a story all week regarding Shane Doles, who crashed just after the practice period started here on Wednesday. They have been working feverishly trying to get that car in the race. They are in the race, and we will have an update on it when we return to the ARCA 200 at Daytona International Speedway. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Arca Bondemar High 200 is being brought to you by TM8 Engine Treatment from Valvoline because driving is more stop than go. By the more than 1,225 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by Suzuki. Your Suzuki motorcycle and ATV dealer has the ride you've been waiting for and the financing to get it. Driver introductions are going on here at Daytona. The Bush Clash was run uh, just a few minutes ago, won by Dale Jarrett, and now the ARCA cars are on the grid. Well, let's get the update on the story we've been following all week from Bill Weber, that of Shane Doles. And Bob, as we all know by now, what an emotional roller coaster Shane Doles and his entire team have been on. There's the empty garage where most of their work has been done this week. But some of the work on their motor was actually done in their hotel room. It all began on Wednesday when he brushed the wall. The only problem here at Daytona, you really can't brush the wall. And here is his story. So it's our first wall banger of the whole week. Just going in the corner and this did the last plug check of the day. And got right in the middle of the corner and blowed the right front tire out. And went straight in the wall. And I tried to turn it right and keep it out, you know, spin it out, but it, it wouldn't go. It's calling all mechanics in Gray, Georgia to go to the Shane Dole's garage. These guys had all kinds of damage. We thought they were going to go back and get their backup car, but I talked to Shane a little bit before we came on the air. He said, nah. He said, we're going to fix it and we're going to go racing here at Daytona. Mainly what we got to do now is body work. Um, we got engine out and checked everything out on it it seems to be okay i said we got the frame straight so it's time to do a little body work <laughs> now they won't get many points for artistic impression it's uh well it's got a lot of yellow tape and some red numbers and it looks good and this is lynn turner and you're the owner of chevy's cafe you're about ready for this new york stock exchange with all the exposure you've been getting the last yes. few days yes we feel like something ought to come about on this you know something ought to come about we feel like Shane can get it rolling, we ought to be able to get on up there. <laughs> Benny says he can tell by your physical appearance you really run a great cafe. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Look who's coming out. Shane Doles, the Chevy Cafe. And the work continues, and uh, you've done some Bondo work on that automobile. Yeah, the tape job didn't, they didn't like that a whole lot, so now we're in the Bondo process. Uh, we got it all wiped down. It's kind of crude, but it's all we can do for right now. And then we'll come in in the morning, try to get it ground down. Uh, took the motor out and took it to the back to the motel. Let's we'll try to get that leak stopped up. Come get it stuffed back in there in the morning and be back on the racetrack at 8.30. Well, we're glad they're sponsoring this deal right now, I guarantee you. I don't know if we can afford the tire bill or the Pondo bill right now. Look this way, right here. We need the TV time, but this ain't really how we want to get it. And they worked late into the evening to get this car ready. 6.30, 7 o'clock last night, Bondo and paint. Today, this car sits on pit road, and Shane will start today's ARCA 200. And you told me earlier in the week, you're going to fix this car, you're going to go racing, and that's exactly what you're going to do today. How do you feel? Well, we feel good. You know, we went out testing yesterday afternoon, and the car wasn't quite as fast as it was before, but it's close enough to get us in where we're at, and we're going to go out and ride and see how it is, and then start charge to the front. I was told earlier just about everyone in Great Georgia is tuned into this right now. How does that make you feel? That's great. I hope everybody's home pulling for us. I think we're going to need it, but I hope everybody does. Keep us in mind and keep pulling for us. Your strategy here, Shane, obviously your car has been through a lot. 
Yeah, it's been through a lot. Uh, the car did good yesterday. Like I said, it drove good. It was a little slower than we, you know, we had anticipated. But I hope everything will pan out here. We made some changes for the race, and you know, we hope it'll be fast. Um, just gonna try to get in the draft and ride to the front. Okay, we'll get to ride along with him because he'll have a roof cam. He had four starts last year, a sixth and a ninth place finish. He'll turn 30 in two weeks. Maybe an early birthday present today for Shane Doles. We'll see, guys, back up top. Join us in the booth today is Kyle Petty, the driver in the Winston Cup division, the driver of the Coors Light Pontiac. And Kyle, you ran your first arc, your first race ever was the ARCA 200, was it? First race ever right here at Daytona. Uh, I'm betting a thousand percent on this thing. I ran one ARCA race in my career. It was Daytona, and thank God everybody said their prayers. I made it through it and ended up winning it and never run again. Folks, he won his very first race. What did you learn that day? Uh, that I wasn't a race car driver <laughs> is, is basically what it amounts to because I, I went straight from here uh, and, and thought I knew how to drive a race car thought I knew a lot about it and uh, Shane's car didn't look anything it looked a lot better than the car I wiped out the next race I went to let me just say that have you been th so you've been through exactly <laughs> what Shane Doe's has been going through you know anybody that's ever driven a race car or worked on a race car has spread Bondo at 1130 or 12 o'clock at night and spray bomb the race car to get it back out to the racetrack and that's just part of racing you know if you if you want to do it and you have the desire to do it like he does obviously then uh, you're going to do you're going to beg bar and steal to get to the racetrack i just told the folks a little bit ago kyle that it takes three or four really three or four races here before the driver can learn as much as he needs to learn you agree with that oh yeah definitely i came here and and won the arca race uh we had they just repaved the racetrack goodyear just came with a brand new tire that was a great tire you could drive anywhere on the racetrack you wanted to we were running about 191 or 92 uh and a chrysler and an old dodge that my father gave me came back for the july race and run head on in the wall coming out of two over there it took me about another three or four years until I could run competitive with the Winston Cup guys and it, it takes that long to learn where the bumps are to learn how to come off the corner and to learn not to do what Strader did to going in turn one during a bush race on the high side four or five wide down there oh you wouldn't want to do that never straight you got to be a dirt driver to do that and you never tried this was his first <laughs> race a two and a half mile race you didn't try the dirt I didn't do the dirt but we've got guys today who's never driven on asphalt just on dirt and they're in this race at Daytona today Bob more pre-race activity coming up prior to the start of the ARCA 200 with a huge crowd on hand here at Daytona International Speedway. We'll take a break and be right back with more. Welcome back to Daytona as we get set for live coverage here on ESPN of the ARCA 200. And coming up right after our uh, coverage of this event on ESPN, Davis Cup Tennis from Carlsbad, California. Michael Chang for the U.S. takes on Alejandro Hernandez from Mexico. And coming up on the deuce right after our show is completed, it'll be NASCAR today. Down on the grid, we have Jerry Punch who's standing by with the defending race winner. And Bob, he's also the series champion for 1995, talking about Andy Hillenburg, the Arca Bondo Marhat series champion. And Andy, a year ago today, your career took a drastic change when you made the left-hand turn into victory lane. Yeah, it did, Jerry. That uh, that less, last uh, left-hand turn there sure uh, had a big effect on my career, pulling into victory lane. And, uh, you know, this race has never been won twice in a row, and, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe this might be the day. Well, it was an emotional victory lane. We're going to wish you good luck starting fifth today. Thank you. We're going to try to get this AC Delco car up front. Let's see if we can go talk to some other drivers starting toward the front. We move uh, over here. And uh, now Bob Shack is a guy, remember, who sat on the pole last year, but on the last practice session damaged his car. No such damage here in 1996. And Bob Shack, you don't have to worry about a bruised fender this year. It's, it's all going to be polished and spit and ready for that green flag. Well, I hope so. I'll tell you what, we're really looking for a good race here. The car is good motor's good you know after that qualifying deal it kind of scared us a little bit but we're looking at taking this taco bell car right to the front hey best of luck to you have a safe thanks bob shack starts third and the guy he starts behind they're just buttoning it up here we're talking about mike skinner richard Childers' own car chevrolet monte carlo on the pole a rookie in arca competition this young man was the hottest thing in atlanta last year set on the pole dominated the race and mike uh, I know you probably talked to uh, some of the other guys in the organization here, one Dale Earnhardt, about what to do here at Daytona, but uh, what are your thoughts about the start? Well, I'm really excited about it. This car's been real stable all week. Uh, Tim and I went out, we did some practice and drafting each other up close, and Andy and uh, Bob and some of us. So I think, you know, the front draft's going to be pretty safe, and uh, what we're going to try to do is get to the end of the race and then race the heck out of each other. Uh, I just want to thank, uh, you know, Racing for Kids, you know, Dale and uh, Jeff, 
for getting involved with that deal, Racing Champions and uh, All American Race Car Museums for coming aboard this deal, and Danny Lawrence with uh, Fearless Factory, Winston Salem. That's Mike Skinner. He'll start. This is an R&D car. A lot of things on this race car. Research and development is what R&D means for Richard Childress Racing that could help their efforts come a week from today in the Daytona 500. Let's check in back with some lesser known names where Bill Weber is standing by. Bill? Well, you mentioned how Andy Hillenberg's career took a major turn here one year ago. Here's a man hoping for a similar story. This is 25-year-old Daryl Lanigan. He qualified 13th. Pretty impressive especially when you consider it's your first trip here, your first race on asphalt. Is that correct, Daryl? That's right. How do you feel right now? The car's pretty good. We did a lot of testing the other day in the draft, and the car really handled pretty good. So I think if everything goes well and we stay clean, I think we'll be up front at the end. Have you been able to talk to some of the other drivers to get some experience through their years here? Yeah, I talked to a few of the different ones. Lloyd Allen's helped me spotting right now, so that's going to help a bunch. And Rodney's down there. He's helped me. Rodney Combs, he's helped me some. So it's all going to pay off, I think. Have a great ride. One thing about Daryl, he's kind of taken some laps around here. He got an in-car camera tape from Ernie Irvin's crew. And for hours, he sat here and watched that 28 car circle the track and circle the track. He thinks he knows this place pretty well. We're about to find out. Let's go back up near the head of the grid to Dr. Punch. And, Bill, outside the front row, the young man who won the 1993 Series Championship, Tim Steele. And, Tim, you were the hottest thing at the end of last year, three in a row. If you could win the day, you'd be in a very, very small group of four people in the history of the Series to win four consecutive races. Can you do it? Yeah, I think so. You know, this HS Die Simlink Ford Thunderbird, it's been awesome the whole time down here. We brought the car down here without a lap on the thing, and uh, my guys have worked their butts off, and they all need to pat themselves on the back they put together an awesome race car here and i think we can do it it's the best car i've ever had here and i've had some pretty good ones in the past well the car is red the engine is ernie elliott it is extremely strong watch for him when they drop the green flag to take off toward the front and watch for mike skinner to go with him see if these two guys can possibly pull away as we get set for the 33rd running of the arca 200 bob Tim Steele starts from the outside of row number one, and we are just moments away from the command to start engines and the beginning of this 80-lap race here at Daytona, the ARCA 200. We'll be right back. The grid's still down on the pit road, getting set for the command to start engines, and we'll have that in just a moment. First of all, we'd like to remind you about our continued ESPN2 coverage from activity here at Daytona. It'll begin at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning as the Bush Grand National cars come on to the track for their first practice session. We'll have second round NASCAR Winston Cup qualifying at 1 o'clock, and then the Goodies Dash cars will come onto the track for their first time as they prepare for their, their race this coming Friday. And also, the International Race of Champions cars will be back on the racetrack for continued practice. Their race is also this coming Friday. We are just about set for the command to start engines. It will be given by Debbie Sloniker from Bondo, who will give the starting command and get this thing underway here this afternoon. Let's go down to the starting line. The marketing manager for Bondo Marhide, Debbie Sloniker. Drivers, start your engines. because the drivers are in their cars, their engines are fired, and now the attention is toward the task at hand, and that is going to the front and being there at the end of 80 laps, 200 miles, and taking home the victory here in the ARCA 200. We will have the 42-car starting lineup and the green flag as we begin our stock car race coverage for 1996 in a moment. at Daytona where the pace laps are beginning here prior to the ARCA 200. We have four cars carrying cameras for you today. Here's Jeff McClure in uh, the U.S.
UAW Ford, also uh, Ham and Bean sponsoring that in car for us. Sounds good to me. There's Harris Devane. The roof cam on his car, number 33 car. Bob Hill also has a camera mounted beside him. He'll drive number 46. And, and finally, Shane Dole. Yeah. In car 97. This is the next uh, Michael Walter Bahari Pontiac from last year. He purchased that car and did not make the first race before he made contact with the wall. Here is the starting lineup, the Suzuki starting lineup for today's race. Mike Skinner on the pole in the Childress Racing Chevy qualified at 189.382. And outside of row number one will be Tim Steele from Coopersville, Michigan in the HS Die CIM Link Ford. Second row, Bob Schacht from Lombard, Illinois, car number 75. And Jeff Purvis from Clarksville, Tennessee in the X1R Chevrolet, car number one. And back in the third row is Andy Hillenberg, last year's champion, alongside Harris DeBain. Row four, we find Ron Barfield. This is a Bill Elliott protege in his first race, ARCA race, alongside Randall Ritter in car 31. Bob Hill will start inside the next row, car number 46. Mark Thompson is alongside. In row number six, on the inside will be C.W. Smith in car number 28. Doug Reed in number 05 on the outside of the sixth row. And there's Daryl Lanigan, the first time on asphalt, alongside Jeff McClure in car 50. And in row eight, Mark Stahl and Perry Tripp. Former series champion Bobby Bowsher will begin from the 17th starting position, car 21, and young Kevin Ray in car number two. In the 10th row will be car number 11, driven by Andy Thurman and Blaze Alexander. Two rookies, he drives car number 26. Row 11, Dill Whittemore and Billy Thomas, a dirt track expert. Row 12 is Kelly Denton and Ed Dixon. Gary Weinbrower goes from 25th starting position along with veteran Bobby Gerhardt. In the 14th row, it's Scott Neal in car number 24 and Dale Kreider in car number 15. And then in the 15th row, we find Wayne Larson and Shane Dole starting 29th. And Rob Smith and Glenn Brewer make up row 16. Going to row number 17, it's Mark Gibson, a local driver, and John Stratman. In row number 18, Glenn Miller and David Froghall. John Wilkerson is in row 19 alongside Delma Coward in row 20. The side window's gone. How about that? Well, it's just loose. It's going to be black flag no. to uh, have to come in and fix it. So the story continues, BP. There's Bob Dodds and Frank Kimmel, the provisionals for today. And by the way, uh, Frank Kimmel will be coming in very shortly after taking the green flag and accumulating the points, and Rick Shepard will take over that car. Boy, more bad luck from Shane Doyles. Can you, Doles, can you believe it? No, can't. And uh, all this bad luck has meant just one thing, that he has become a household name. <laughs> well, you know, they, they did repair that side of the car. Maybe something just didn't, uh, they forgot about something or something just didn't go right. Evidently, that is the side Hold that he hit the... Run. Watch your speed. Anybody else find the piece of leg, Sam? Make something to go in there. I'm trying to get a piece back here from Hutch. something to cut this stuff with a jigsaw preferably it's gone isn't it Kyle yeah it's gone it's somewhere on the racetrack evidently it's blown out and that's the worst thing they're sitting here they're sitting on pit road you can hear it in his voice mm -hmm. he's getting ready to drop the green flag and they don't have a spare and if you look at the Winston Put Cup guys Pontiac. everybody's no, got a no, got a spare a on it but I mean this is bad man oh man you know how it is, Benny. This is the most helpless feeling in the world to be sitting there and watch everybody drive off into turn one. And they're going to do that to, in just a few seconds. The cars are in turn yeah, two. Yeah, what the uh, official says, that truck will bring it down here to us. He, he went out and picked it up. There's one of the crew members running back to their garage area. The, the safety crew has your window. <laughs> it's okay. He said he's got the window and it's okay, so Shane is saying, well, tell the guy to bring it to us. <laughs> yeah. It's okay for the safety guy. It's not okay for Shane. Yeah. He doesn't have a window right now. I cannot hear your radio at all. All I got is static. Throw that silver gun away. 
the window. The window is broken up. You hear me now? The window is broken up. We've got to get another one in here. Somebody's looking for one. He didn't try to get one cut out. So now they'll have to go buy a piece of Lexan or, fire or plexiglass and get a saw and saw it out. And fit it and pop rivet it in. And pop rivet it in. Wow. Okay, meanwhile, while he sits on pit road, helpless until help arrives and a new window arrives, the field, now 41 strong, just about to get the green flag. And we welcome you to uh, our coverage. No, the lights are back on. They are not going to go green. They'll go at least one more time. Jerry, why do they bring the lights back on? Well, the safety crew went out, guys, to pick up that window from Shane Dole's car and noticed some, some possible debris coming off turn two on the back straightaway. So rather than turn these cars loose at over 190 miles an hour, they called off the start, and they will go out and check the back stretch and hold them at least one more lap before the green. There's a safety vehicle going down the back stretch while Shane Dole's, once again, sits helplessly here on pit road. Said saw that air hose in the window. Anything will work as long as you put something in the right side, Shane. There's something. I ain't going to be able to see nothing, though. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, does it have to be clear? Because he can't no. see anything out that thing. The rule doesn't say anything about it being clear. Really? It's just we can't do that. Here. I got to be able to see. Okay, well, Shane says he's not going to run with that. I need that. something clear. I need something clear. I have on the way with a piece of legs in. Get that other window, whoever's got it. Up. Yeah, it's history. Uh, well, I'm glad my car didn't have a piece of plexiglass in it down there because my car would be junk right now. <laughs> That's exactly right. I'm surprised they didn't stop at one of those cars sitting back there and try to take the glass one out. Looks like the safety truck is off of the racetrack. Look, at, we're continuing here. One of the pet members still running down pit road. Man, what a feeling. What a helpless feeling. All this work they've gone through, and now they can't race. This is Evidently, that wasn't our window. It wasn't their window? Is that what he said? Hmm. Bill, what's the story down there? Well, a, a crewman from another team went behind this pit carrying the exact part these guys need, and everybody started Something cheering, stuck yelling. In there halfway decent. We'll cut this one out and go. Telling him this is where he needed oh. to be, and he waved him off. He said, nope, we need this one down It'll at the other clear. end. Well, this time, the field is going to get the green flag as Shane sits on pit road. The pace car has come in. And here comes the field toward the green flag. Our stock car racing season for 96 here on ESPN is underway, and so is the ARCA 200. lap 16 team Tim Steele right behind Jeff Ferguson number one runs third Bob Shackton 75 is fourth as they head off toward turn number one again and man out three wide well almost two wide now going into the corner Ron Barfield in the blue and white number 94 that's the Bill Elliott protege got the car a little bit out of shape going down in turn one looks like he ran into the apron with a left front that's going on in the Shane Dole's pit as they try to get that uh, right side window filled in and get Shane back out on the racetrack. That's Jeff McClure in the black car that we see in number 50 alongside Perry Tripp. The green car is number six, Perry. There's Kevin Ray, the 18-year-old young man in car two. And Mark Stahl is right beside him in car number 32. Lot 
lots and lots of side-by-side -side racing. Bob Hill in the red 46 and Harris Devane. Ron Barfield in the 94 and the 05 is Doug Reed from Hueytown, Alabama. That's the young man that told us the other day on one of our shows that he went to Atlanta last year and didn't run fast enough. His daddy fired him for someone else in the car. <laughs> I He's know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you. He's a four-time WKA karting champion. Hey, they're making progress down on Pitt Road with Shane Doles. Meanwhile, the 0-2 car, Frank Kimmel, comes in. The driver change here, has been made. Skinner, the white number three. These three cars have broken away from the next two. So it's Skinner, Steele, and Purvis. Never nervous Jeff Purvis in third spot. Fourth place car is Bob Schacht. Ron Barfield just cannot get off the bottom of the racetrack. That's him behind Jeff McClure. This is Harris Devane's car, the camera on top of the vehicle. And Caution we have a yellow flag. flag. Caution flag is out. We have car a car that spun coming off of corner number four. That's the 15 car of Dale Kreider. That's a car he just bought yeah. from the Pete Orr bunch. Man. Well, I hope they don't race back to the line too hard because uh, he's sitting there in the racetrack. He's actually down in uh, the entrance to the pit area, down on the apron, so it should not present a problem to the drivers as they come down and get the caution flag for the first time this afternoon. Yeah. Pete Orr, I guess, is going to concentrate on the Bush Series. Go run the entire Bush 1996 Bush Series. Shane Doles, meanwhile, sits down there, but it looks like they have made a lot of progress. They're not quite ready to send the car on the racetrack. There's Dale Kreider, who has brought out the first caution of the ARCA 200. We're back at Daytona, but we are under caution for the first time this afternoon as the number 15 car driven by Dale Kreider from St. Petersburg, Florida. Spun coming off of corner number four. The car came to rest uh, at the entrance to the pit area. Here is the field summary for you showing where everybody is running at the moment and the number in parentheses to the right of the driver's name is an indication of where these guys started. So you can see that uh, Jeff McClure has moved up to ninth position after starting in 14th. The rest of the field summary as we take another break during this caution period and we'll be back with green flag racing at Daytona International Speedway when we return. The aerial shots that we will be seeing throughout the uh, afternoon are courtesy of the Blockbuster Video Blimp and the captain today is Terry Dillard who lives down the road in Orlando. Thanks for the great overhead shots here at Daytona. Here's Bill Weber. Well, Bobby Bowser, the two-time series champion, has been to pit road. He has a miss in the motor. His brother, Gary, went under the hood to check for plug wires. That's not it. So he's going to have to battle it here this afternoon. And remember, he finished 45 points behind Andy Hillenberg in the race to the championship last season. So every point is important, and they start counting them here today, guys. Let's go down to Dr. Punch. And, Bill, the first caution flag today came when Dale Kreider actually spun the car, and Dale... Uh, you're pulling the helmet off. That's not a good sign. What happened? No, sir. Uh, well, we're just riding behind Bobby Bowser and trying to move forward. And uh, uh, what they tell me is the crank, uh, the pulley on the front of the crank came off and uh, uh, spun me out when the motor locked up. Uh, for a minute, I thought I'd, I'd run over some trash because I felt a vibration. But, uh, you know, it was, it was the front pulley getting loose. This guy made it 18 out of 24 hours a couple of weeks ago, but he only makes it a few laps here today. Bob? So Kreider is behind the wall, but Shane Doles is finally on the racetrack. The repairs have been made to that car, and after all the bad luck that he's had, he's about to turn his first lap of competition. Here comes the field down for a restart, and the green flag waves once again. It's still Skinner, Steele, Purvis, Shaq, and Hillenburg, the top five. 
some of the observers around the racetrack are reporting that Tim Steele might be losing some fluid. I would guess, I would speculate it's probably water and runs behind the skin of the car is running a little bit warm and the overflow, water's coming out the overflow, but we'll, but we'll wait and see. And also the ARC officials are going to black flag Scott Neal for passing on the left on the restart. You cannot pass on the left side until you get to the start finish line. You know that, don't you, Kyle? I know it good. I thought it was Shane Dole's for a minute. I saw a yellow car coming <laughs> on the inside, and I said, oh, not something else happened there to him. <laughs> now a battle for second place as wow. Jeff Purvis has taken over second place from Tim Steele. They come down through the tri-oval and are side-by-side -side at the line. Steele on the outside in 16, and Purvis in number one. See what, those guys had a handful up there in that corner as they passed each other. I think, as far as Tim goes, I think Skinner said it in the beginning that he had drafted with Tim, and they had, he and Tim were going to race until the end of the race and then race their rear ends off. They were just going to ride around. I don't think anybody told uh, Purvis that. <laughs> Look at Mike Skinner dipping low on the racetrack to try to break the, break the draft. Now, there's our scoring pylon over there on the uh, upper left of your screen showing the uh, top ten and how many laps there are to go. make a bid for the lead he shoots to the outside in that number one car and going into turn one he takes the lead and it looks like Tim Steele may come along he did that so easy does Skinner have a problem maybe they just got position off the trouble and went on the outside <laughs> Jerry Punt does Skinner have a problem well, he radioed in a moment ago, Benny. He thought he heard something rattling or popping, and I just checked with his crew, and uh, Will told me they think they may have an exhaust pipe cracked in the car number three. They had one cracked the other day in practice. So it shouldn't affect it very much, if at all, but uh, that may be what he's hearing in the car. Now, Tim Steele behind him also had a problem a moment ago. Apparently, he has some paper stuck to the right front grill on that car number 16. The paper now apparently has blown away, but the engine was starting to run hot and lose a little bit of water out the overflow. So that was the fluid that the ARC officials did, in fact, see coming from the 16 car. The 29 car of Daryl Lanigan had a tire problem. He ducked in and out of the pits. And now Skinner into the number three car pulls into fourth position ahead of Andy Hillenberg as they get into single file formation down the backstretch. There's Hillenberg in the 52 car, the defending race and series champion. Two victories last year. In addition to his win here at Daytona, he won at Flat Rock Speedway in May. Well, now Skinner's coming back now. Yeah, he is. I think the first three cars, Skinner and, and Purvis and Steele, their cars are pretty equal. When Skinner tried to break the draft from them, the other two cars just lined up, got a good run when, as he broke the draft to the inside and then back out to the wall, just sucked up on him and went by him. So Mike moves back up to third position. From the blimp, we can see the lines that the drivers take around the racetrack. Uh, they're running on the bottom of the racetrack. That's the preferred line now, Kyle. It, it seems to be in the early going. If you watch these guys as they run, it's it's always that way through three and four. You watch these guys run through three and four, they run right dead on the bottom because the car seems to have a tendency to get a little pushy and want to work up the racetrack as you come off, as you kind of give the car ahead to come off and, and head back towards the trial. As you go into one and two, uh, you'll notice in the Winston Cup races and watch this ARCA race as they go on, when they're running in a tight pack, everybody will go to the outside to pass. They'll start running higher and higher. There's a really, really bad bump in between one and two that it's just tough to shock for. No matter what the Penske's do or the Bilstein's or the Olean shocks come out with, it's just hard to guard, man. And it just it rattles your teeth. It'll knock your feelings out about halfway through a race. So I think everybody just gets tired of it and moves up. But they run on the bottom right now. Since their tires are fresh, they're only seven or eight laps into a run. They'll run there. But towards the end of the run, they'll move up. There's Bob Dodds in the 09 car. Top five cars have broken away. We're riding with Jeff McClure, who started 14th and is currently up to sixth position. It's been a steady move to the front for Jeff McClure. in Mark Thompson and there's Ron Barfield. Mark Thompson in the 66, Jeff McClure in 50 and Ron Barfield in the 94. McClure was fifth in the 1994 Arcabano Hyde point standings. Kevin 
gray and the blue number two car there. Sliding up in front of Scott Neal, the number 24. That's the young man that was black flag for passing on the left on the restart, that yellow 24. Devin Ray, his dad, raced here in Daytona many times. John Ray. Holds the tractor trailer rig record at Talladega, does he not? I think he does. As a matter of fact, he lives. Kevin and John live very near the Talladega Super Speedway. Shane Dole's doing? Well, uh, he's at least racing. He's on the racetrack. <laughs> and the camera will see. We need that so the camera can see out the right window as well, Kyle. That's true. That's it. And that's the main thing. He's doing exactly what he needs to do now. He's got his car fixed. He's out there. He's making laps. And there's nothing better than making laps at Daytona because it pays off. Might not pay off this year or next year, but it'll pay off two or three years down the road. He is six laps down, running in 41st position, but nevertheless, he is getting some experience. And he's talking to the crew as he's going through the, that right thumb. He's pushing the button down, talking to the crew as he goes through the corner. That thing looks pretty good today compared to what it has looked like in the previous few days. It looked like the wreck of the old 97, didn't it? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Not turning the wheel, sawing the wheel back and forth. No. Very calm on the steering wheel. Yeah, he's the are so watching. That's Bobby Bowser that we see that Shane Dold is going by. So Bowser's car, obviously on seven cylinders. He's obviously running fairly well because when we first went to this shot, there was nobody in his. You yeah. looked out his windshield and there was nobody there. Right. And all of a sudden, he has run down a pack. Yep. Back to Jeff McClure looking back on Ron Barfield. 4760. Ron Barfield, that's an R&D car for Bill Elliott. And we don't have any idea what kind of parts might be on this car that Elliott is testing for the Winston Cup car. Shocks, springs, engine parts. Barfield coming to ARCA after winning Rookie of the Year honors in 1994 in the Slim Jim All-Pro Series. Now McClure looks to the bottom of Mark Thompson. Jerry Punch has more on the 94 car driven by Barfield. You know, Ron Barfield had never driven on a super speedway until today, but of course he was Rookie of the Year in the All-Pro Series, and back in the wintertime, spent two days, eight hours a day at Talladega, and three days, eight hours a day, right here at Daytona, drafting with one of the best, Bill Elliott, who's his car owner. Now, what Elliott told him about being in the racetrack, race traffic was, in on a plate track like Daytona, you keep your right foot glued to the floor and use your left foot just to tap the brakes so slightly when you run up on traffic. If you back off that throttle foot, they're going to run off and leave you. Is that right, Kyle? you got to keep your foot all the way down and brake with the left foot. That's about the best thing to do. What happens with these cars with a restrictor plate motor is there is no acceleration at all. None at all. So once you're out and try to get back in, it takes longer to build up the speed than if you just drag the brake. So uh, most everybody, that's why they've gone, as you as you know, they used to go to the to the real thin rotors and the, and the light calipers and stuff to get as much brake away from the car as you could at the speedway. Now everybody's running the same stuff at Daytona that they run at Martinsville. Bill, looks like the hood's going up on Bowser's car. Yeah, he radioed in just a few laps ago. They were talking about it. He's definitely got a miss in there. I just talked to Gary a couple laps earlier. He said it hasn't gotten any better. They told Bobby he could take it behind the wall if he wanted to. He's elected to put it in here. They fueled it. They're under the hood, and that's where they're going to be working. We're at the Daytona International Speedway for the ARCA 200. Stay with our coverage right here on ESPN. <laughs> Welcome back to Daytona International Speedway, ESPN, on the air live with the ARCA 200 that's being led by Jeff Purvis at the moment. There he is in car number one. We'll show you a field summary where all of your favorite drivers are running at the moment. Skinner back there in the white number three is second. Looks like Hillenburg is trying to challenge for that fourth position. Couldn't get the job done. Oh, he did get the job done. He just oh, yeah, passed he did. Bob, pay attention. Okay. He passed him. He's now fourth spot, and Shaq is back in fifth. And that's Tim Steele in the third spot. 
The 21 car of Bauscher is behind the wall. The 57 car of John Stratman is on pit road. And BP, before we go any further, we have to welcome a new race fan into the world. He is just about nine hours old right now. William Michael Sipperlin uh, was born this morning at 5 o'clock. He is the uh, son of John and Mary Beth. John is the producer of ESPN's Speed Week. So 8 pounds, 10 ounces. Welcome to the world, William Michael Sipperlin. Here's Jerry Punt. Guys, prior to the race today, well, there was a drafting coalition struck and consummated with a handshake. Actually, what happened was Mike Skinner agreed with Tim Steele they would shake hands and draft together and run away from the 52 and the one car. But what's happened because of speed differentials, they have switched partners, and now Skinner, who was going to go to school on learning how to draft, tries to make a move on Jeff Purvis. So, best laid plans, huh, Kyle? Sometimes they don't always work out. They never work. When you when you pick a drafting partner, you might as well just be talking to yourself because nobody's going to help anybody except themselves. It's like taking the ugly girl to the prom because she was available, and after you get there, you notice she is available, so you dance with her all evening. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but she's got a good personality. Yeah, right. <laughs> Purvis is running an entirely different line than Skinner. Now, there's a slower car up in front. I think that's Wayne Larson. Yes, it is, that they're going by. So Purvis is not able to run the low side, but he normally runs right on the bottom of the racetrack. And Skinner moves up a little bit. Look at this heavy traffic they're encountering now. They're in heavy race traffic. Go to the bottom of the racetrack. Go down way below the white line. Three abreast into the corner, and they make the pass successfully. Ooh, Randall Ritter in the 31 car. Gear one drawer in 77. What was that went by, they said? <laughs> I don't think they saw him coming. <laughs> now that we still have that same problem with the third, fourth, and fifth place cars. Bobby Bauscher's problems continue. Let's check in with that situation. Former two-time champion, you've had second place finishes at Daytona and Talladega, but not today, Bobby. What happened? Well, we picked up a mess. I don't know if it was fuel or electrical. And just one of them things, we started going backwards, we come in, checked it out, couldn't find out what was wrong, so quality fire and fleet port Thunderbird there, I was just trying to back up a little bit and get a little bit of room so I could race a little bit, and then it just started missing, but we just had to come back another day and try it again, but uh, the car felt real good the first few laps. You chased this championship all the way to the last race last year, I know this has to crush you. Well, you know, you, you got to start out the year a lot better than what we do, you know, and it, the playing catch-up is hard to do, and then... It kind of drags you down through the whole course of the year, and it makes it hard at the end of the year. So we just have to go home and see what we can do and go to Atlanta next month where my luck hasn't been too good and try to change it there. But I'll be home tomorrow, Britt. Bobby Bauscher won the pole award title in 1995, taking five Talladega pole positions. The race was an early one for him here today. Blaze Alexander in the 26 car made just a pit stop just a moment ago, and the ARC official said, uh-uh, too fast on pit road, so he'll have to come back in. As a matter of fact, he's doing that right now. There's third and fourth, 16 is Tim Steele, 52 is Andy Hillenberg. On the right of your screen now is the 75 car of Bob Schacht, and he is fifth. Shocks that are running. I can't run down there. But there's a there's a really bad bump over there. Earnhardt's really, really good. And that's where he's been so strong the last three or four years in the Winston Cup division. He and, and Sterling and those guys, because they can run through that and they make their car work there all day. A lot of guys, including myself, haven't been able to do that over the last couple of years. Harris Devane in the 33. 46 is Bob Hill and Perry Tripp in six. He's smoking, Benny? Yeah, they tell me that he is losing some fluid or smoking. He's going to be black flag. Perry Tripp is a former open wheel driver, used to run some uh, sprint car and some USAC Silver Crown races. Bob Hill tries to take a look on the inside of Harris Devane, and he does. That's Kevin Ray coming up on these three cars in number two. Yeah, we saw the smoke that time out of the yep. back of Perry Tripp's car. Oh, yeah, you can see it pretty yeah. obviously now. Now on your scoring pilot.
pylon are the manufacturers represented in the top ten. We have a couple of Chevrolets leading and one running in fourth position, but otherwise it's a Ford show here at Daytona. This is Harris Devane, the roof cam. Bob Hill in front. Harris Devane was one of co-rookie of the year last year. He and Dill Whittemore, they finished with the same number of points, and so they just gave the honor to both men. Here is first and second, Purvis in one, Skinner in three. You heard Mike Skinner at the top of the show talk, uh, say thanks to Jeff and, and Dale for Racing for Kids. My understanding is Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt purchased Racing for Kids. That's a magazine designed towards children, you know, uh, five to ten-year-old kids, and it is a great magazine. I get it, and uh, it's a really good magazine, if you, especially in the southeast. Uh, most of the libraries, I know the, the schools that my kids go to, you see a copy of it, or four or five copies in every school library you go to, so it gets kids excited. There's a lot of school projects out there that, that have to do with Winston Cup racing, where they teach second, third, and fourth graders about numbers and adding and subtracting and things like that by using race cars, so uh, it's, it's a big plus and it's good for Dale and, and Jeff to get involved like that. And folks, if you're concerned about some things that are offensive to kids that are involved in racing, all that is airbrushed off the pictures that they use in racing for kids. Harry Tripp has heated the black flag and come in for the check. He was smoking rather badly while he was out there on the racetrack. The scheduled pit stop should be coming up soon. We'll be back for those when we return to Daytona. Now it's a two-car race in the ARCA 200. The leader is Jeff Purvis, and right behind him is Mike Skinner. But we have pit stops coming up, and they're going to make their first scheduled pit stops at about the halfway mark. Doc, what's the strategy down there? Bob, well, that's basically it. If you can make it to 40 laps to come in uh, one stop, fill it up with fuel, and get it full of fuel, put on four tires. Although tires aren't really a factor, they'll put them on anyway because of concern about debris. Then they'll go out and run the final 40 laps. Now remember, there are at least seven teams down here who have Winston Cup crews fitting their car. Kelly Denton has the Mike Wallace crew. Daryl Lanigan has a combination of the Jasper, the Bobby Hillen crew, and the Jeremy Mayfield, Kerry Arbor crew. Ron Barfield has the Bill Elliott crew. Scott Neal, the Sterling Marlin crew. Now close toward the front, the Earnhardt crew, Winston Cup crew will be pitting Mike Skinner, and Jeff McClure will have the Bud Moore crew pitting his car. So, and one driver who got, made his first start today on asphalt, well, it was a short one. He's standing by with Bill Weber. Darrell Lanigan, your first start here, obviously a short one. You want the next one to be longer. What puts you out today? Yeah, it's pretty disappointing. We had a tire equalizer at the beginning. Then we just dropped about this, and we didn't have no luck today. The car felt good. Oh, it was running good when we got out there with the other group of cars, but no luck. A dream come true for most drivers to compete here at Daytona. How did it feel to you? Oh, I felt pretty good. We wasn't too nervous. So, I mean, I guess that meant a bunch because we got out there and we ran pretty good with them guys. So uh, we'll try them again in Atlanta. Darrell Lanigan out for the day. Kyle, what do you figure? Mike Skinner falls back, and then he drives up behind Jeff Purvis. Is he overheating, and he's going back to cool the thing down and make another run? What's the deal? You know, I don't... I think he's just playing. You know, I think at the beginning of the race, he pretty much said what he wanted to do. He pretty much said it in the opening interview, that he wanted to just run until they got down to the last part of the race, and then he was going to give everything he had. And he drafts up on him, you know, and he sucks up. And you watch him. He runs, Skinner will run the low line through three and four, and then he'll run up half a lane. Then he'll run high, and then he'll run low again. And he's all over the racetrack. He's just figuring out what his car is going to do on old tires with a little bit of fuel in it if it gets down to be an 80 on the 72nd, 73rd, 74th lap where these other guys continue to run their main line. I think he's really, he's driving a pretty sharp race right now. He's trying to figure out what his car's going to do on old tires and, and no fuel. We'll be drop our coverage back here a little bit and check on three, four, five, six. That's Blaze Alexander, 26. Now, he's a couple laps down yeah. uh, because he made a pit stop and then was penalized for going too fast, but it looks like the new tires, Kyle, are a lot faster because look how much faster he is than Bob Jack. I'd say new tires have been a plus in the Winston Cup garage area this week. This is a different compound, a different company and stuff, but the way the racetrack is, and you know, Benny, you pave a racetrack, everything sticks. As the racetrack gets older and older and older, new tires become more and more a factor. And even at a place like this, they might not be faster, but for two or three laps, but those two or three laps, it makes you feel good. You know how it is when you get to Rockingham and Darlington, you love new tires. 
Danny Hillenburg now comes up on some slower traffic. There's uh, Hillenburg in the number 52 car. Tim Steele in number 16. Steele going for four wins in a row. He won the last three races in 1995. Meanwhile, once again, Skinner has caught right up to Jeff Purvis. Doc? Well, Mike Skinner has a bit of a push in the car. They're going to make an air pressure change when they pit here in about two laps. But the big concern, the reason he's been backing up and coming forward, is they are going to try to work out a deal to pit with the one car. Those two guys will pit simultaneously in about two or three laps at the halfway point. So he backed up, moved up on uh, Purvis and moved back. So we can basically follow Purvis down pit. But remember, Skinner has never been here in an ARCA event, so pit road speed is very, very important. And that's a good point. Backing off to get in the pits is very critical because they're out there running 190 miles per hour and they got to slow down to pit road speed of 65 miles per hour. And where do you start doing that? Do you do it come when you come off turn four? Do you go, do it going in turn three? Purvis will be able to lead him in. Yeah, it's, it's very critical. First time I came here in 79 to test, Dale Lemon said pit road speed is the most critical thing, judging where to come in. I came off turn four there running about 180. And when I came out the other end of pit road, I was still running about 140 or 50. <laughs> There was no way I was going to get that car wound down. <laughs> First time I'd ever tried it, and it was an important lesson for me. All right, Purvis and Skinner stay out on the racetrack. And when they complete one more lap, it will be the halfway mark. $1,000 goes to the driver who leads at the halfway point. So apparently, Purvis wants to put that money in his pocket and then... He'll come in for the pit stop. Or Skinner knows that. Maybe we have a radio. Can I call Skinner and tell him there's a thousand dollars to the halfway leader? I guess we can't tell him. Nah, probably not a good idea. That's a Richard Childers team. He probably knows. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They pick up every dollar that's laying on the table. You can count on that. Jeff Purvis won three. Has won three Super Speedway events. 93 and 94. Here he comes down through the tri-oval. And the cross flags are being displayed. Jeff Purvis wins the auto value halfway money of $1,000. Perry Tripp is smoking badly again and dropping down to the apron. Yeah, he made a pit stop as dictated by the ARCA officials. And they looked at it and I guess thought it wouldn't be too bad. He goes back on the racetrack. And we can see that it is smoking worse now than it was just a few laps ago. We've only had one caution flag in the first half of this race. That was for a minor spin by Dale Kreiner coming off of corner number four. Everything else has been clean and green. But now pit stops are about to occur. Let's look up toward turn number four and see if Jeff Purvis. Yep, Purvis and Mike Skinner are both coming in. Also Billy Thomas in the 22 car. Now that's going to be some traffic in their way as they come down pit road. That could help those guys running back in third, fourth, and fifth. There you see they've got to follow Thomas. And oh, oh, Skinner comes awfully close to running into the back of Purvis because Purvis had to get on the brakes to avoid hitting Thomas. Now here they both come down toward turn number one. Skinner will arrive and hit area first. Jerry? And they will change all four tires. Remember, they had a push. They've already made an air pressure adjustment on the tire they're putting on the right front before they would go on. Now, one on the top of your screen, three on the bottom. Purvis on top. Skinner on the bottom. Left side tire is going on the three car. Let's check in down the Purvis pit. Four tires for Jeff Purvis. Now they've changed their mind. It's only going to be a two-tire stop. Right side only. Waiting on fuel. The fuel's in, and Purvis is away. Skinner charging down pit road, and we'll go by him after they've exited the pit. Andy Hillenberg also leads, following Tim Steele as all the leaders pit here. And Purvis just cannot get his car up to speed. We can see he's still back there trying to get it up to speed. I don't, I don't know if Purvis missed a gear or, or what happened, but I mean, as he left pit road, he all but stopped at the entrance to the infield course there. I mean, he slowed down so slow that a couple of cars went by him. Bob Shack in the top 10 is now in for a pit stop as Purvis tries to get back up to speed. Jeff McClure is the leader at the moment as pit stops are happening. Here, look how close this is. Skinner running into the back of Purvis. Well, Billy Thomas in the 22 is going to the garage area. I mean, he's out for the day, and you see the six car pulls in his way. Both of those cars are going in, and you can see the one and three almost ran in the back of those cars. 
Bob Shack. Bill, he's in your area. And he's going to take on four tires for his Taco Bell Ford Thunderbird. They've already done the right sides. The fuel is complete. This is taking a long time. They're working on the left side. McClure coming in with a three-car draft. Now Shaq is down, and he gets a push, and he's away, but that took a long time. Let's go to Jerry Punch. And our leader after that pit stop here is Jeff McClure. He will come down pit road. And McClure at 65 miles an hour. That's the speed on pit road. It seems like an eternity. It must to a driver from the end of pit road all the way down to where McClure is pitting. A combination of the Bud Moore and Wood Brothers crew now pitting the car number 50 owned by Bobby Jones. Right side tires going on. They will only make a two-tire change. And they fill it up with fuel, first can going in, and they're waiting to get it full of fuel. They could have probably already changed left side tires. And now the car is down and away in less than 19 seconds, but only two tires. Pulling out right behind him is Ron Barfield. Here is Doug Reed, who is completing the work on his 05 car and coming in. Harris Devane, Kevin Ray, and Bob Hill all looking for pit stops here. And 65 miles per hour. That is pit road speed. And you see the white lines on pit road? The ARC officials have a stopwatch. They time these cars between those white lines, and they can't be even so fast. Here's Bill Weber. And waiting on last year's co-rookie of the year to pull in. He's got the 46 car right behind him. Almost didn't see his pit. Now he yanks it left on the wheel and pulls it in. The 33 car sets are going to go to the right side first. Let's see if they take four tires. It's also right side tires for the 46. Fuel going in. They'll clean the windshield and the front grill. You might notice that the 33 car doesn't have uh, his name on it. It's being used for another event here as a local, as a movie production company is shooting some scenes here. Harris the main with two tires gets away. 21 and change. Now the 46 car also right side is only and he's away. And there comes Bob Shack. Looks like, and the 94 car, Ron Barfield and Jeff McClure. So Shaq has fallen back to that group. That is Bob Shaq, isn't it? This is 33, Harris Devane, as he shifts the car into high gear, coming off turn two. Well, apparently the number three car of Mike Skidder has gone back into the lead as a result of the pit stops. We will be back with more of our live coverage in just a moment from Daytona. All right, Carl. Well, we're back at Daytona, and yeah, earlier today the Bush Clash was held, and Dale Jarrett came out on top. Another member of the uh, Bush Clash field was Jeff Gordon, and he's in the running for Racing Personality of the Year tomorrow when ESPN presents the fourth annual... Back of the ARCA 200 now, Mike Skinner is uh, the leader of the race at the inside moment, and running 26. in second He's position is Jeff Perkins. This is Bob Hill that we're riding along with as he goes by the start-finish line. He's right behind you, number three behind you. Number three, the leader, right behind him. Inside, inside, inside. He's running the lever. Right behind him. So right now, only ten cars on the lead lap. I follow him, man. Yeah, right. He's got a full rope. <laughs> Throw one to you. <laughs> I know that feeling. Yeah. Follow him, huh? I wish I could. <laughs> I heard that two or three times last year. Just follow that car when he comes around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got you. Dale, Jerry, you and Dale used to play in the dirt around these racetracks, didn't you, Kyle? Right down there behind the score stand is where our mothers used to sit, right? We're sitting straight across from them. There used to be, remember, there used to be a playground under it. There were slide boards and the swings, and uh, you were racing there. I think I don't like these shocks up the front. What do you say? He doesn't like the shocks? Yeah, he didn't like the shocks. So that's where you played, huh? That's where we played, right up under there. Had a big old time. Hang on to what you got, bud. That's, our, our mothers could look out the back and see us, and they'd come down and wear us out every now and then if we got uh, <laughs> got too rowdy. There was a chain link fence around it, though. We couldn't go anywhere. So it was a lot of fun. There are 36 of 42 cars still running, and Dr. Jerry Punch has an update on Jeff Pur or Bill, rather, has an update on Jeff Purvis, who is running in second, trying to catch Skinner. And his car owner thinks thinks he's coming. You think he's closing the gap? Yeah, he's definitely closing the gap. I think, you know, he's, he's gaining a couple tenths of a lap. A little slow getting up to speed after that pit 
or not, James? Yes, it was. We were making sure we got the fuel in it because we don't know exactly how far we can go on fuel. There was some talk earlier this week you guys might withdraw. I bet you're glad you stayed. Yes, we are. We got we got our number anyway. <laughs> and they're doing okay so far today. Now the 32 car, uh, Mark Stahl losing a couple of positions here. That's the blue and white car up on the high side of the racetrack. That's Jeff McLaurin, 50, Ron Barfield in 94. That is Mark Stahl, as you mentioned, and Kevin Ray in the two car. Now, Kevin Ray raced with these fellas about all day, but when he made his pit stop, he was too fast on pit road. It was black flag, so he lost a lap. Might follow up just a little bit on that story that was alluded to. When the three car came here for practice on Wednesday, it was number one. And so was Jeff Purvis's car. And there was a moment when uh, Jeff said, well, if I can't run the number one, I'm going to leave. But uh, that was all worked out. Skinner took the three. Purvis retained the one. Now here's the AutoZone race recap. Mike Skinner is the leader. He's led 18 of the first 52 laps. We have five lead changes. Only one caution period for three laps, so the average speed is near 169 and a half miles an hour. Jeff Purvis has led 30, Skinner 18. Harris Devane has been in front for two laps, and Jeff McClure and Bob Schacht have also been credited with leading a lap. The attrition has not been all that bad. Here are the drivers who have dropped out of the Watch race. Watch that yellow car, Jeff. He goes up to the top of the racetrack in almost every corner. That's Frog Allen in the car 12, and Frog is very, very slow. Must have a flat tire that said he goes up the racetrack, so. been black flag for going too slow, so he'll be coming in. Yeah, Frog's got a, got a handful today. A couple more slow cars in front of you. 24, Scott Neal and Ed Hickson. R.E. Hickson in the... R.C. Hickson. R.C. Yeah. Yeah. Close. Mr. Hickson. How's yeah, that? Mr. Ron Barfield, that car looks pretty stable, doesn't he, Kyle? All these cars look really stable. You know, a lot of times you come down here and you watch these things and you watch these races and you can learn a lot. Even the Winston Cup guys learn a lot because these are the body styles we run. These are the Fords we run. These are the Monte Carlos that these guys run. And, and you learn a lot. From these cars are really stable. And I think it's just a matter of the technology bleeding over from the Winston Cup. It's like you guys said, there's two or three cars out here right now that are, are ex-Winston Cup cars. And, you know, they bring the technology over for yeah, no, no, you I'm surprised you noticed the Barfield car. I thought you'd be looking at Hearst Ham Beans there, <laughs> thinking about later on this afternoon. <laughs> now, Bar, I'm kind of interested in how Barfield does. He used to race with my son, Kevin, up at the Myrtle Beach Speedway. And uh, he and Kevin are pretty good friends. And, uh... The shack up there in front of you. Just watch and listen as you also look at the field summary, showing eight cars now on the lead lap. Yellow flag is out. Obviously, the ARC officials have found some debris on the racetrack and have thrown the flag and Jeff Purvis had called Skinner Kyle yep and that's pretty amazing so now for the only the second time this afternoon the caution flag comes out and the field will be bunched up in the Arca 200 back at Daytona International Speedway in the Arca 200 part of Speed Weeks 96 here at Daytona. We'll have continuing coverage on ESPN2 all during this coming week. We'll have the Florida 200 next Friday and the Bush Grand National Goodies 300 next Saturday night. Caution is for a spin that involved the 28 car of C.W. Smith over on uh, the Turn 2 area. However, he uh, continued on. And there's some concern in the pit area about Frog Hall in the number 12 car. They're attending uh, to him. Look, you know, look, oh, Kyle, you can't get in the lake anymore. Thank goodness. See the wall back there? Folks used to, 
uh, the cars would spin off turn two, and a few years ago, uh, dash car, dash car, mm -hmm. yeah, went in, and he, I, I think he landed on his wheels after he was in. He, did, he upside yeah. down. No, he was on his. I don't remember how he landed. He was in the lake. That's all I know, and that's not where you want to be at Daytona International Speedway. In the early '60s, there was a couple of cars yep. uh, spun and, and moved down in the lake. But I say they put a wall up to keep those cars out of the lake. That's Lake Lloyd. We've been real fortunate. You know, you used to have a lot of bad wrecks coming out of turn two and get into that inside bank and get up on top of that, that stuff. But, you know, with the side windows, with the skirts, uh, with the roof flaps that they've come out with, the technology has taken a lot of that out of it, and it's been a lot safer. All right, let's take another break here while we have the opportunity under caution before we resume the ARCA 200. Stand by. We'll be back in just a moment. Coming up on 60 laps completed in the ARCA 200, an 80-lap race. And the leader is Mike Skinner, followed by Jeff Purvis, then Andy Hillenberg, Tim Steele, and Bob Schacht. Pit road has been closed, and now we see the fellow waving the green flag right behind the 76 ball. Who's going to pit? Skinner doesn't pit. The one car doesn't pit. Just cars. None of the lead lap cars are coming in. That's kind of a surprise, isn't it? Kind of. Well... Yes and no. You know, I think they know what their cars are capable of because because they run, you know, they run the first. Uh, Tim Steele is in. Tim Steele came in. Yeah. So, yeah, Tim Steele's in. But, uh, you know, they ran the first part of the race. They felt like they had something that was, was pretty decent. It worked after 30 or 40 laps. So, uh, you know, I guess they, they think that that's what they're going to have at the end. And we see that now they're taking the lug nuts off the left side. Uh, Jerry Punch. Yeah, they are going to make a four-tire change on Tim Steele's car, BP. Actually, he, he pitted on lap 41 when the other leaders came in, but he only changed right-side tires, and he said the car has not handled very well at all. Not that tires will make that big a difference here, but they wanted to go ahead and come in and change four tires. None of the other cars, there are only eight cars in the lead lap, none of the other cars wanted to come in, and certainly not, not Mike Skinner. And we saw them taking the lug nuts off with an air wrench on the left side. Park of rules, you can use three impact wrenches. Bill has uh, more on the uh, Purvis car. Yeah, guys, Jeff had a similar complaint when they came in and took on uh, just two right side tires. He was not happy at all with the way the car was handling, but he said as the laps have gone along, the car's gotten better, so uh, he doesn't plan to come and stop. Jerry punches with Richard Childress. And guys, we told you that Mike Skinner was a rookie here in ARCA competition. He needs all the help he can get. Well, he's not getting it from Pitt Road. Actually, we're going to show you where he's getting it from. That's the crew in the pits there. And we're going to have Robbie pan around. We're actually way up behind Pit Road, up on a scaffolding with Richard Childers and Carl Warner. Richard, uh, going to be awfully proud of your truck driver so far. Yeah, he's doing a super job. The whole team has, you know, getting the car down here and getting it ready. And, you know, we were trying a few things for Sunday. The car is pretty tight right now, so we're just going to see. Jeff's got a lot of experience, too. Now, what are you doing? You're actually helping him with regard to the draft. I mean, I know you're talking to him a lot up here. What are you saying to him? Well, you know, I, if I see something, I tell him, but it's awful hard to tell somebody, uh, you know, how to draft or something. But if I see a little something, I, I think it'll help him. I've been telling him. Mike Skinner is a rookie, but he's got an awfully good teacher here and a veteran car owner who's won Winston Cup title after title with Dale Earnhardt. Back with more live coverage from the ARCA 200 after this. The lineup is forming for the restart. We've been under caution for the last few laps, but just about to go back to green now at the completion of lap number 62. We got 18 more to go. You can see that there are eight cars on the lead lap as the pace car is about to pull off the track and hand the field over once again to Mike Skinner. And Ron Barfield, the 94 car, pitted too soon. The pit road was closed. He made a pit stop, so his penalty, he has to start back at the end of the longest line. So he's way back there. Here he comes on the outside, the blue and white car. Reed on the inside of Skinner in 05, trying to get a lap back. Skinner down the back stretch. Zero five car is. Well, he's right now. He's on the tail end of the lead yeah. lap. Right. Now he's a lap down. <laughs> By a few inches. By a few inches. 
Here comes Purvis. Closes up right on the back bumper. Ooh, Harris Devane almost got in the back of Purvis. Harris Devane in the 33. Bob Hill is in 46. Ooh, they get awfully close down there. Now, the inside car's hung out now. They'll drive yeah. past it. Devane was helping. Hillenberg in the blue, red, and white car pulls out to the inside, tries to pass Bob Hill. He's got Mark Thompson right behind him in the 66. Low, clear low. Hillenberg spotter. 66 is right behind you. The front two cars have broken away again, scattering yes, purpose. Yes, they have. Right behind him, it's a pretty tight pack. A lot tighter, tighter than even at the beginning of the race, anything we saw. Well, I think what happens, when, especially when you have a lot of inexperienced drivers, they come to a racetrack like Daytona, it's very intimidating. When they first start the race, they become very, they're very cautious and they want to get some laps in. Right now, they're only 18 laps to go, 16 laps to go. They want to get all the positions they can, so they're pretty racy right now. Yeah, they're thinking finish at the beginning, now they're thinking race. Exactly. They're still there, still there, still there. That's the Bob Hill spotter telling him that the guy's still there, still there. And it's the 50 car of Jeff McClure and Mark Stahl is on the inside. The white number 11 is Andy Thurman. That car is owned by Andy Hillenberg, and Thurman is one of his, his instructors at the Fast Track Driving School. And him go to the inside, Benny. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Still there. Help behind you. Nice pass. Still inside you. Mark Thompson, 66, thought about making it through a breast, pulled out, couldn't go anyplace. Hill in 46 and Thurman at 11, right beside each other as they head toward that banking. That's still winning more in the 56, last year's co rookie of the year. in the blue 51 in that group. Head out of St. Louis. While all this racing and training of positions goes on, behind, up in front, it is still Skinner and Purvis. There they are, and that's how close they are as Skinner tries to break that draft going down the back stretch and go to the inside. But Purvis will not be let go. Jerry, what's the strategy here? Bob, that's exactly what the strategy is. Now, what Mike Skinner has been told by his veteran crew, and I talked to Richard Childress a moment ago, see how he moves down the racetrack and back up? He's being told to move around, not let Purvis get a clean draft. Mess the air up coming off your car. Move in, move out, back and forth gingerly, but back and forth so Purvis can't get a clean run at you. Now we see Chevrolet's in the first three spots and seven fours right behind them. Looks like the sun is just trying to come out, Kyle. Does it make a difference uh, on this racetrack if you go from uh, cloudy, overcast day to sunlight? Sometimes it does. You know, it, it really more than, than cloud cover or sun for this racetrack, wind is a, is a big factor at this racetrack. And the wind's been pretty consistent all day long where it's blowing. It's a tailwind down the back stretch. But, you know, sun cover really won't make a big have a big effect on these cars not this far into a run not this late in the race i, I think they're they're pretty much what they got is what they're going to get whether the temperature goes up 30 degrees these guys are going to run the same lines and be in the same place in july it's a totally different racetrack the sun does affect it but uh, february we're pretty it's pretty stable because it's fairly cool it's fairly cool you know and and no matter what you know even the air temperature uh the track's temperature seems to, to be real consistent at about 70 or 80 degrees so it's going to stay right there and like i say i, I don't think i think that's a non non issue right now with this oh, tim Steele goes for third he gets it that's mcclure behind him in the 50 car harris devane up top of the 33 and andy hillenberg was racing with tim Steele, but not anymore Steele has pulled away wow and he and harris devane are awfully close that's doug reed in the silver car right behind them 
again, he's trying to get back on the lead lap, but uh, hasn't had the success that he would like. That 50 car, this is a one race deal, I think, for McClure. He might run a few more ARCA races, but that the 50 car, Bobby Jones' team, is going to main campaign the full Bush Grand National Series this year. And a young driver out of Alabama, Jimmy Kitchens, I think, is his name. Ooh. Yeah, ooh is right. <laughs> That's right there. <laughs> Where's the 94 car? They had to start all the way at the back. No, he must be at the back of this group. There's Bob Shack back yeah. there. There he is. He's running by himself. All by himself. So he's completely out of the draft. So. Uh oh, 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 oh got a problem. Crash, that's one. Couple of cars spin through the grass, up the banking. Let's hope there's nobody back there. It's the 56 of Dill Whittemore and the 05 of Doug Reed. And boy, that could have been a lot more serious than it turned out. Man, oh man. Man. Third caution of the day. It comes on lap number 70. Now, Kyle, I just know you were thinking two laps ago that was a wreck looking for a place to happen, right? Uh, I was thinking about that about every other lap but two laps ago. I'm going to tell you that. I thought they had finally sorted themselves out and they were going to be okay, and they just barely got into the outside wall here as they come through the trial and bounce back across the racetrack. See, roof, the roof laps work, BP. Yeah, that, that's a good race car driver. Nice young man, Doug Reed, and Dill Whittemore, nice folks. Hey, they just got racy. Let's watch and see what happens. Through the trioval, they came into the uh, straightaway leading to turn number one. Five car is okay. He's, Ooh, he's the 11 now. goes up. The 11 goes up, gets in the wall, and I think comes down and makes contact with the 05. Yeah. And as we see, the 05 takes the front and the 11 goes on. Yeah. This is where it, it can get really scary because you're down on the apron. You have no control here. And now all of a sudden you're back up in the racing groove and there's cars coming at you. But fortunately, nobody made contact with the two cars as they slid up the banking and came down the banking. Here it is once again from a different angle. Now, once again, watch the white car, the 11. Now, both of them made contact with the wall, didn't they? The two white cars did. Yep. Reed and Woody Moore down through the grass, up the banking. Woody Moore hits the wall. There was one car there that came pretty close, but was able to avoid the two disabled cars. And lap 71. Let's watch the end car and listen. a bullet once again in real time not slow motion and that car just turned left and right under me yeah. went yep uh, again those roof flaps that popped up on both cars are a lifesaver literally yeah i know everybody gets tired of, of people talking about roof flaps, but you can't say enough about them. I'm, I'm going to tell you, there's not a driver down there that hadn't, ex hadn't experienced them coming up and been awfully glad that they did come up. Yep. So we waited until just a few last, less than 10 laps to go before we had our first major crash of the day. This one was, could have been a lot worse. Both drivers are okay. There are 72 laps out of 80 completed. Thank you, Carl, and we are about to resume this race. Uh, we've completed 73 laps. They'll come down and complete lap 74 and get the green flag. And yep. we'll have just six to go. Here's why we're cautioned, BP. Yep. Once again, Andy Thurman in the 11 goes up, makes contact with the wall, comes down, gets in the back of Doug Reed 05. He gets in the front of the Dill Whittemore, and spinning they go. 
drivers okay. A lot of hitting there. There'll be some hitting on the boards tonight as ESPN presents coverage in Philadelphia. The Flyers show you the top 15 drivers. And again, eight are on the lead lap. This caution was a bit of a break for Ron Barfield. He was out of the draft, but now he's back up on the back bumper of the seventh place car, Bob Shack. Right now, we've got Glenn Miller, the 69. You saw him just briefly a moment ago, stalled on the apron of the racetrack. So we'll not be able to go green flag racing. Here's 16 to 30. Glenn Miller's car, who are the stop right below us here in the tower. They're going to have to get that car off the racetrack before we resume competitive speed. There you can see 31 through 41, 42. Here's Jerry. A minute ago, Richard Childress radioed his driver, Mike Skinner, at the head of the field. Said, you know what's going to happen these last seven laps. That guy behind you, the one car, is going to come in a hurry, and he's going to try to pass you. And Mike Skinner, being the good pupil he is, said, now what do I do about that? And Childress said, well, we brought you here to get some experience, and you're about to get some. Let's go to Bill Weber. And he's going to get a lot of experience here because it looks like the one car may get some help. The one bunch in the 16 team of Tim Steele have been talking. And what the what the tentative plan is, you never know how these things work out in racing, is for Jeff Purvis and Tim Steele to team up, try and get by Skinner, then race for the win here at Daytona. So a little strategy is being thought about now as we enter the final laps of this race. Can anyone beat Mike Skinner? Coming up on five laps to go in this race, still under caution, however, but the lights on top, the pace car are out. And Glenn Miller's car is off of the racetrack. So it's going to be what we normally call the shootout. The last shootout five laps. The shootout at Daytona, not the OK Corral, but Daytona. And this is featuring Mike Skinner, Jeff Purvis, Tim Steele. The blockbuster video blimp is still hovering overhead. It's based in Orlando, Florida. And when a local pilot, Terry Dillard, at the controls this afternoon, giving us these overhead shots. You can read Mark of 200. From the blimp, you can really see these 31 degree banks down in three and four. Folks, see how the that is 31 degrees almost straight up and down. Looks the, looks like it is. Sure does from here. Yep. It feels like it when you're out there today. <laughs> But when you sit in the seat looking through the windshield, it look, doesn't look that banged. It looks fairly flat, doesn't it? Yeah, it, do, it doesn't feel anything. You know, it, the front stretch feels like it's exactly level, and it's, it's banked some degrees. 16, I think, something like that. Okay, here comes the field off the fourth corner. Pace car ducks into the pit area. Lap number 75 about to be complete. We've got five laps to go. Who's going to win it? Let's see. The green comes out. the racetrack and, and jump out in front of everybody just enough to catch a good draft off the first two cars. Now Tim Steele has Jeff McClure down on the inside. If he chooses to go with him, he might leave Skinner hung out to dry. Now those two cars racing side by side for second are going to allow Purvis to pull away. As fast as Purvis has been, he just needs a little bit. Oh, oh Steele almost spun out. Man, did he? Cal, did you see that? Oh. It take, I, I close my eyes. <laughs> I'm not watching this. I'm just talking. It's a lot different up here than it is behind the wheel, isn't it? It's a lot scarier. Uh, yeah, it it's is. It's a lot scarier up here, <laughs> believe me. There's McClure battling with Skinner. He's a little loose. Yes, he is. But he's got third. Well, he rubs with Mike Skinner coming down through here. Meanwhile, going to the inside is Mark Thompson in 66. Wow, what a move by Thompson. He has moved up to third. Three laps to go. 
50 was, got really loose, got up in, almost into the three, and the three checked up a little bit, and that allowed Thompson to go on. And that's what you have to do at this point in time in the race. You just got to pay attention to what's going on in front of you and not ever check up. You got to stay right in the gas. Meanwhile, Skinner in the 50 almost revving again. Harris Devane pulls up on the back. Uh oh, again. Oh. We'll talk about a ref waiting a half. I'm telling you. There's the 86 car of Kelly Denton that suddenly showed its nose out of Bristol, Virginia. Two to go. Okay. Just, you can tell us for purposes. Oh, oh. Don't leave these two cars. <laughs> and here comes Andy Hillenberg on your left. Did you see those guys make contact in the... Sheet metal, the tires rubbing the sheet metal, smoke flying, and just kept on guessing it. At 190 miles an hour, friends. Here's Andy Hillenberg making it three wide into turn three below McClure. Now, Barfield has joined that group. The white flag is coming out. One to go. Purvis Steele, meanwhile, has caught Purvis for the lead. What will Tim Steele do here on the last lap? Look at this. Barfield to the inside. Yep. He gets by McClure. Uh-oh, we got a wreck. Thurman spins. Hill is involved. That's Dixon. Oh, there's a car over and over. Wow. Set Bob times. Hill. Bob Hill several times. And now we have a fire breaking out in the car. This occurs on the last lap of the race. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, we'll walk up toward turn number four and find out who's going to win this thing. The wreck is over in turn number two. Here they come for the checker. Purvis is low, steel high. It's going to be Jeff Purvis winning. Steele is second, then Mark Thompson, Mike Skinner, and Andy Hillenberg, the top five. That's from our in-car camera. Look, he's trying to get out of the car. That's the car that flipped in for in. We see yep. him moving around. Oh, now he's going to get out. Look. Well, he's got the rescue rescue crew there right now. Take your helmet. Hook your helmet, hook your helmet there, Bob. Your yeah. helmet's hooked up. He's not concerned about that. Oh. It'll all rip out. As long as he can find an opening here. What dramatic pictures here from the in-car camera that's still working after that car overturned probably, what, eight or nine times? Yeah. Great wow. pictures. Great pictures. Here there he is. Oh. There he is. That a boy. And the rescue squad, squad crew yeah. squad is there. They've got the fire out. Bill Weber is with James Finch. And I was just updating James on Bob Hill, and his condition appears to be okay. And I know you guys are happy. Congratulations. A long week for you guys getting to the checkered flag here. Yeah, I'd like to dedicate this race to Susan Bonnet. Hopefully she's watching this race in Hueytown and uh, wish she was here. And I'll talk to her a little later. And... We, we appreciate the race. <laughs> I asked you as we were getting close to the end if you were content to be in second. You said yes. Did you really mean that? Yes, I did, but I didn't think a caution was going to come out. You know, we were gaining on him pretty good, and uh, but when the caution come out, we didn't know if we would be able to hold, hold him off or not. But the 33 car helped us, and so we were fortunate enough to come on around him. That's the first of three races for him this weekend, huh? Not a bad start. No, it's not. We had a good run in the Winston Cup, and... Hopefully our Bush car will have a good run in that. We'd like to get a top 10 in the Winston Cup. We qualified 12th, and uh, we were hoping for a top 10. And so if we can finish in the top 10 in the Winston Cup, we feel like we've done real good, especially with no sponsor. Okay, he wants to head on down to Victory Lane. Hey, guys, he was the coolest man down here during those last few laps. He was just sitting there. We kept smiling back and forth, and now they're going to go celebrate. Jeff Purvis becomes a two-time winner of the Arca Bondo Marhai 200. Um, look at that eagle. Look at that paint job there, Kyle. See the eagle on that? Yeah. Pretty Phoenix. It's Phoenix racing. Yeah. He won also in 1993 and drives into victory lane to begin the season in 1996. And he's also going to run the Bush Grand National Race next Saturday and the Daytona 500 next Sunday. What a dramatic last lap. But everybody appears to be okay after a multi-car and what appeared to be a horrific accident over in turn number two. 
Bob Hill got out of the car and appears to be okay. And Jeff Purvis has won the race by about a car length over Tim Steele. There he is. Here's the good doctor. And Jeff Purvis gets mobbed in victory lane. And Jeff, uh, congratulations. You made it look easy those last few laps. Well, I tell you what, uh, Richard Childers put a real good race car out there. But this Phoenix Racing team put a little bit better race car out there, I feel like. We uh, we were good. We've been good all weekend. But, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody knows this, but uh, our crew was thinking about it this morning. This is uh, two years ago today that Neil Bonnet got killed here. And uh, we all just loved him to death. We thought so much of him. And we want to dedicate this to, to uh, Neil's family, Susan and David and Kristen. And we love y'all. We miss y'all. Wish y'all were here. Of course, Neil was driving for your car owner, James Finch. Uh, now, today, did you have this good a car all day, or did you just save it till late in the afternoon? I got a little bit of a break there. That last caution, that last caution saved me because I couldn't, I just couldn't get a run on him. He was, he was as good as I was when he was in front of me. And, and uh, you know, we just had a great race car. What can you say? They, uh, they worked hard on this thing. I've got three good race cars here. My Bush Grand National car. We're looking for big things out of it. And, and this, uh, you know, my Winston Cup car. We qualified 12th here. And, you know, it's just a great race team. They've worked hard. They've worked all winter, and this, this pays off. You know, Skinner faded somewhat when you passed him, but then Tim Steele came out of nowhere. You had to be a little bit concerned those last couple laps when he came up there. Tim was uh, Tim was as fast as I was, it looked like. But there again, I mean, it's I've been here a lot of years, and, and uh, I learned a lot through the years, and I felt like I had one move and one chance to get in the lead of this thing, and it just happened to work out that way. You came here, didn't have an entry, and they weren't going to give you your number when you first got here. You said, we wanted the number one, and finally, somehow, as your car owner put it, we stole number one, and today, again, you steal number one. Well, we really did. This uh, He works hard, James. Uh, James gives us good equipment to race with, and, you know, he just, he's just he been great to us. And But they were just playing about that number. They weren't going to take our number. <laughs> <laughs> a big smile. A two-time winner, Jeff Purvis, won it in 1993 and does it again here in 96 in the ARCA 200. Bob? It's his eighth super speedway victory. And look at the inside of Bob Hill's car. It's, it's amazing how bad the car appears to be torn up. But if you see the way everything bent and everything went, it went away from the driver. The dash went away from the driver. The steering column went away from the driver. The car held up really, really good. I mean, you know, when you start getting up on your roof at 180, 90 <laughs> miles an hour, you want something that looks like this when it's all over with. All right, we got several replays. First from the blimp. Harris Devane, someone got in the back of Harris Devane. And Bob Hill gets in the back of the 11, and he goes down. When he hits the apron, when he hits the apron, the yep. car just catches on the catches left up. side, and around, over he goes. Wow, he gets up in the air, doesn't he? Sure yeah, he does. Is. There's three, four, five, six, seven, and then gets hit just as he lands. And, and then, then the, the fire. fire. And yeah. then the fire. And the fire is the scary part. You know, it, I think that's scarier than the flip is because now you know that he's in there and, and that he could possibly be hurt and the car is on fire. Now from this camera, which is on top of the tower, again, they were racing down into turn number one. Someone's going to get in the back of Harris Devane. The white yeah. car is going to get in the back of Harris Devane, and then they're going to have they're going to start checking up. And the 11 car is going to move down in front of Bob Hill. And he's going to hit him and run in the back. And then it's just booming. That yellow, that blue car, Ed Dixon, really clobbers the wall. Yeah. Kevin Ray back here, he slides into it, and one car slides through, and he misses it. And I think everybody's pretty much focusing on that. Those pieces that are flying off the car actually are dissipating the energy, and so that, at least that much, is taken away from the driver. Now, this dramatic shot from the in-car camera. Let's watch it. Listen. Every time the car hit the ground, it took another tumble. That was awesome. Isn't that something? Gee, that's the, the worst sound because as you heard the tumble, you could hear it hit, then it would get quiet. Then it would hit again, and it would get quiet. That quietness is the worst sound in the world you can ever have in a race car. When it, when it gets quiet inside a race car, you know something bad's going on. 
Boy, just look at that. Man. The 19 car driven by Robert Smith comes along and hits him to put a punctuation mark on it. But the good news is that ill is okay. Speedway. So Dale Jarrett and Jeff Purvis turn out to be the winners. Here's second place, Tim Steele with Bill Weber. And with his head cheerleaders, you want to introduce your, your clan here? Uh, that's my wife, Brenda, and my daughter, Kelsey. I think they're two of my biggest cheerleaders. Yeah, I bet your dad is, too. You just told me he pays the bill, so you let him do something. He spotted for you today. Yeah, he was spotting for me. He'd done a heck of a job. But, um, you know, right at the beginning of the race, the car was tight. And asked the guy to loosen it up a little bit. And they'd done that. It was definitely loose. You know, we got there in the air. And I was sideways a few times. I thought we were back at some of these dirt tracks we raced in the Arca Circuit, but maybe that's a good thing we had some of that dirt track experience there. They don't give assists in racing, but if they did, you'd get one today. You teamed up with the one car down the stretch. Yeah, it was uh, let's make a deal time. My dad and uh, Purvis the Spotter were up there, and it was like, you know, do you want to want to get by Skinner or you want to race for us? Like if. We're gonna do what you said you're gonna do. I'll go for it, but don't give me a bad card here. <laughs> no, let's do what we said, and it it all worked out. You know, we're, the guys they all deserve. They need to all pat themselves on the back. You know, this car came down here without a lap on it. Um, we worked on it all weekend, qualified second, finished second. You know, I think this car we'll never see a speedway again as far as the restrictor plate track. We're gonna build a new one. We found out what we need with the new Fords, and um, I think. We're going to be really strong come uh, Atlanta and Talladega. Talladega, I think, will really have a good car. We learned a bunch here. I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, it's a big win for Jeff, but he's not running for the championship, and you are, so that's a big step today. Yeah, just the, with the championship, you know, top fives. And Ernie Elliott, he built us one heck of a motor and done a super good job on that. And, you know, all those guys. I'm thankful to have those guys on board. They do a super job for us. Hey, you've been great all week. Thanks for all your help. Congratulations today. Thank you. Okay, back up to you guys. By the way, we will be there to see how he does at both Atlanta and Talladega because those races are included on ESPN's coverage of the Arcus Bondo Mar Height Series. There's Bob Hill's car. It'll roll. Yeah. I thought the sure they'd have to bring the car on a roll back. That's amazing. There's another car that will never see a racetrack again. Yeah, he right. I was talking about his. This one won't either. This one, is, they'll learn from this car. You learn. Every time you, you have a wreck, you learn something that you can do to make the car better. But this car was perfect. It held up exactly like it's supposed to. Peter Larson's going to be tickled to death. His camera is I'm, still working. I'm telling you. Uh -oh. the, the roof cam has been sheared off. It's history. But oh, sorry, one... <laughs> Peter. <laughs> <laughs> but the one inside the car still works. Boy, that is Man. unbelievable. Well, we'll show you where everybody finished here in this race today when we come back to Daytona. We're back at Daytona now, poised to take over in the Arca garage are these cars. These are the Bush Grand National cars. They're assembled right now on the backstretch, but as soon as the Arca garage is vacated, they will move into that area. Jerry Punch is with third place finisher Mike Skinner. Well, Mike, you sat on the pole, led the most laps, did about everything you could do until uh, six to go, and then it was all over. Yeah, you know, the cautions didn't fall our way today. We had an awfully good car. You know, these guys put me in a great race car and uh, had a good shot to win the race. He stayed green. I think we'd, you know, been in real good shape. Five laps to go or six laps to go, whatever, at Daytona with a pretty slow car on the inside. Jumps pretty good there. Not the place to be is in the front. Uh, a good hole opened up for Jeff on the bottom, and, and he took the hole, and... Uh, like to trade it places and try it again. Now, we talked during the day that Richard Childress was telling you to move your car around, and you actually were messing up the air for Purvis and causing some problems for his car up until that point. Well, you know, in the first part of the race there, what he was doing to us is what we turned around and played it on the other hand. And uh, the Winston Cup guys came over and pitted the car. We got a great pit stop and got it, beat him out of the pits. When we did that, it gave us the opportunity to... Uh, turn the hand over and so we did the same thing to him he was doing to us and it was working perfect he had the same problem when every time I'd get a run and get right up under him uh, the car would pick up such a bad push it'd scrub the speed back off and the same thing was happening to Jeff and you know we could see it pretty clearly and thought you know this is gonna be pretty good he don't have no help right there and you know we're just gonna run out of laps here in a minute but uh, next thing you know there was that yellow flag now last night you had a team meeting Earnhardt Childers yourself and some others you talked about your race car and this morning, Earnhardt made a suggestion about a change in the rear. 
Yeah, Dale thought we should put a little door uh, split in the back, and, you know, he's raced here a heck of a lot more than I have, so I listened to him, and we did it, and the car was hooked up. The car was great. The closer that they'd get behind us, the better that car was, and it never, you know, it never tried to get loose. It just got real neutral, and, um, you know, if you can do that with these big blades right here, when they get the air off of them, the car's still hooked up real good, you're in good shape. The bad side to that coin is when you're second and you're following them, your car pushes. So uh, it was a good call. I want to thank him. He gave me a lot of help down here this week. And uh, him and Jeff uh, Gordon's uh, Racing for Kids magazine gave us a little sponsor help, and racing champions. And uh, a lot of folks put in a lot of time on this deal, and I really appreciate it. My congratulations on a great run finishing third. Let me move over here to your left. And uh, Doug Reed's a young man, 21-year-old from Houston, Alabama. And Doug, you... You took a wild ride up there. First of all, good to see you're okay. Yes, sir. I want to thank the Lord that I'm all right. So we had a real good run going. We had a fast car. That held up a little bit in the pits and got in some real tight draft there. And I think somebody uh, pushed up into the wall and come down into it, started a little, started something and uh, kind of got turned around, went through the grass. I was hoping I could keep it back up off the of racetrack, but couldn't do it. And I uh, think I collected a couple other cars. I'm just glad and thank the Lord everybody's all right. And we had a real good race car today. Hardest you've ever hit? Oh, no, sir, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> oh, it looked bad, but he can smile. Man, I, I think that would, have, that would have to hurt, right, Benny? Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll bet it does. I, but it really, it truly wasn't as, it wasn't as bad as it was scary. I'm sure that he was terrified as he was going backwards about 160 miles an hour. Now, this is not the wreck that he was involved in. Right. This is the other one. This is the other wreck. And watch the red car. Watch... insult to injury, Rob Smith comes along and hits him while he's almost stopped. What happens is Kelly Denton in the white car, the second white car, is going to get in the back of Harris Devane. So he's going to check up. He's going to have to hit the, the brakes. The 11 car moves down to, mi to miss him right in the path of Bob Hill in 46. Ed Dixon in the blue 51 clobbers the wall head on. drivers are okay and here's the in-car shot listen to this you can count all seven of them Minutes. ...on the racetrack, and we had a crash of our own. Uh, we lost power here at Daytona because, apparently, of this uh, balloon that got into some power lines, but I think everything is okay. You all right, Benny? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm Kyle, you all right? Doing good. All right. Fine now. I'm not going to mention Bondo anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that was scary. Uh, everything just went black for a while. Anyway, here's Bill Weber with Andy Hillenberg. Okay, Andy, uh, you told me you had a fourth-place, third-fourth-place car today, and that's where you came home. Yeah, you know, we, we can't be disappointed. We uh, we try to win every race, but uh, you know it's not going to happen. Uh, and today wasn't our day. We ended up fourth, uh, ran third there most of the race. Uh, there they had that caution late. They really bunched things up. I wouldn't want to brag about a few of the guys uh, driving out there. I was a little disappointed, uh, you know, caused a couple wrecks out there that were, you know, I, I seen them coming and just barely got by, and then they wrecked right behind me both times. and. Uh, so we were pretty lucky to get out of there in one piece after getting shuffled to the back uh, on that end. It seems like that defending champion tag, uh, you know, you don't have as many friends as you <laughs> used to uh, when it gets to the end. But um, that's all right. We'll go to work on that and, um, you know, be back here Saturday in that AC Delco Chevrolet. That's your next stop? Yeah, Bush Race Saturday. Okay. And he stayed with us through the commercial. He wanted to make sure the grandparents could see the whole family, guys. But uh, <laughs> he had a pretty good finish down here today, and we'll see him next weekend. <laughs> Well, the former sprint car driver from Indiana showed well again today here. Didn't defend successfully the uh, race championship, but he finished in fourth position. Andy Hillenberg. We'll be right back. ESPN, the Davis Cup tennis from Carlsbad, California. Michael Chang against Alejandro Hernandez from Mexico. And on the deuce, 
ESPN. Stay tuned for NASCAR Today with Dave Despain, and we will be here with continuing programming on ESPN until 5 o'clock this afternoon. So after NASCAR Today, we'll all be back for another hour. Let's take a look at the full field rundown of our race just concluded here this afternoon at Daytona. Jeff Purvis uh, won his eighth Super Speedway event. That ties him at the top of the list with Grant Adcox and Jimmy Horton, and eight cars finished on the lead lap. Let's take a look now at 16 through 30. Mark Gibson, we didn't mention him. He finished in 16th. Ed Dixon, who hit the wall so hard in car 51. Credit with 17th. Gary Weinbrewer in 20th. And there is the remaining 12 cars. Dale Crowder, the first car out of the competition today. Let's go down to Jerry Punch, who is with somebody that we are very glad to see. Jerry. Bob, incredible. This man walked out of the care center, a big smile on his face. And Bob Hill, first of all, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, I'm starting to get a headache, but I'm okay. Now, you went in the care center and sat down on the table. I'm told you were able to watch the replays. Uh, did it feel as bad as it looked? Uh, believe it or not, it felt worse than it looked. I mean, it, when it hits, it hits hard. And I was just wishing it would hurry up and be over and, uh, you know, that we'd come out of it okay. And, you know, these cars are pretty safe. I don't, I sh I've seen guys do that. And uh, you wonder how they can come out of it. But I think I'm, you know, I'm just going to be pretty sore, but I'm all right. Now, we had the in-car camera. Incredibly, uh, it kept running, as you did, thankfully, uh, during that whole uh, circus. And the car began to somersault. And we counted seven times it flipped. And then the car come to a rest. What actually happened out there? How did it all start? Well, that was a, I believe that was the white flag lap. And uh, our car wasn't working that well all day. And uh, we were just going to try to stay on the bottom and ride it on in, uh, to the end. And uh, a bunch of them just started getting together in front of me. And I got on the brakes and uh, got into the 11 car and uh, turned him sideways. Somebody ran into me, turned me sideways. I think my car got backwards, and then uh, some big spoilers we got on the back there just lifted it up, and away we went. Had to be a little spooky climbing out of the car, too. We were had a camera inside watching you trying to find a way out. Well, it was. It was all busted up, and uh, I unlatched the window net, and I couldn't get it unhooked from the... The other end, and I was trying to bend it, and, and uh, they told me on, I still had my radio on, and they told me it's on fire, and, uh, you know, then I seen the fire extinguishers go, that the safety crew was there, and, uh, you know, got it out, and I finally, you know, jumped on out of there, but everything's pretty jagged and tore up, and the car's a mess, but, uh, you know, I just thank God that we're all right, and everybody else is. First time you've ever been on your head? That's the first time I've ever uh, tipped a race car over, and this is my 21st season, so I guess I've been lucky. And, guys, the very first thing he did when he got to the care center, he watched the replay one time and then got on the phone, called Story City, Iowa, and called his wife, Jane, and said, Guys, said, uh, honey, I'm okay. Well, we are certainly glad to see him able to walk away from that thing because it was a scary, scary accident. We will wrap up the story we've been following since Wednesday, that of Shane Doles, when we come back. Mark, uh, Bondo Marhai 200 is over. We do have some IROC cars that are out there on the racetrack dialing in, getting prepared for their race coming up this Friday. Let's go to Bill Weber and put a period on the saga of Shane Doles. Okay, well, congratulations on your top 30 finish. I, I've never met a more optimistic person in my life, and you're certainly one that had to be heartbreak at the start. It was. I mean, really, the guys worked so hard all week to get the car back together, and I look over, and they said, did the right window blow out of the car? And I look over, and I said, yeah, it's out. So they go to hunt and stuff, and just can't find enough stuff to get it back in quick enough. But they got it done, and we made the race, but the car was that right side and still messed up pretty bad, and it, it just never was back to where it should be. But... Hey, we got it in there and did best we could with what we had. Uh, you're a prince. Thanks for everything. I hope we see, it at, see you at Atlanta. I know you're looking for some sponsorship, so we'll look for Shane Doles and the rest of his group when we get there. Back up to you guys. Well, the uh, story's the, over, huh? Do you see the blonde uh, man and woman standing behind Shane Doles? Uh -huh. I met them this week. They're from England. Oh, yeah? And they are absolute fanatics for Winston Cup racing. I'll be darned. There's one of the IROC cars out there on the racetrack. They have about uh, 90 minutes of opportunity to continue to uh, 
get those cars dialed in. And we will be back, of course, tomorrow on ESPN2 as the unprecedented coverage here at Daytona continues. Bush Grand National practice at 11 o'clock tomorrow. 1 o'clock, second round NASCAR Winston Cup qualifying. Then the Goodies Dash Series moved onto the track for some practice at 3 o'clock along with the IROC cars. Yeah, we, we all kinds of work down here. Folks, if it moves, we're coming <laughs> during Speed Weeks. And again, we want you to stick around on both networks. If you like tennis, stay with ESPN because we have the Davis Cup uh, finals from uh, Carlsbad, California. And if you like more racing, why stick around on ESPN, too, because Dave Despain will have NASCAR today. And we'll all join in and help him, and we'll be on the air until 5 o'clock this afternoon with whatever else happens here at Daytona. Kyle, thanks for joining us. It's been a pleasure to work with you again. I've enjoyed it, man. You guys work more than I do. I'm looking at the schedule. I've probably yeah. got one practice tomorrow, and you guys <laughs> work all day. See well. the new grandstands. Folks have been wanting tickets for the Daytona 500. Couldn't get them. They're building new seats. Be ready next year. What's the assessment toward uh, winning the Daytona 500? You got a shot at this thing? <laughs> right now, you've got as good a shot as anybody, and that's what we were sitting here talking about. I think the Fords and the Chevys are, are pretty close to each other. The Pontiacs, we're catching them. We're, we're getting there. You know, I think Rick Mast and some of those guys are good, but there's three or four Chevys that are good. There's three or four Fords that are good, and everybody else is going to be struggling along. Congratulations to Jeff Purvis, who has won the Arca Bondo Mar High 200 here this afternoon. My thanks to Benny and Kyle and Bill and Jerry and everybody for their help on this show. And we thank you for joining us here at Daytona International Speedway. And we will see you with continuing coverage on ESPN2. Now let's go to the ESPN studios and Carl Ravage. Carl, it is all yours.